Hello, my name is Niall Keegan. I'm a flute player. Um, I teach uh, traditional music in the University of Limerick. Um, I'm delighted to be able to teach this course for the online academy. Um, uh, I'll spend the whole course going through what I think are advanced flute technique, my own advanced flute technique. Um, a lot of people are very eager to say what's wrong and what's right and there's, there's wrong things and right things to do. This is my take on it. I don't, uh, when people say to me, this is wrong, I tend to want to run away from them. If it sounds right, if other people think it sounds right, and as it's dance music, if people can dance to it, it usually is right. Um, so I'll give you my take on flute technique. Um, I'll start this particular class with a, a fairly simple, straightforward common tune, which you can call Willie, Willie Coleman's The Jig. Um, and we'll focus on ornamental practice, um, and we'll develop that ornamental practice so it gets quite difficult and quite advanced. I'll throw a lot at you very quickly. Um, Throughout the course, we'll keep developing ideas of ornamental practice. We'll develop ideas about key work. We'll develop ideas around phrasing and about some basic ideas about uh, about variation and improvisation. So this is the tune we'll work at. This is the way, one of the ways I'd normally play it. So I'll take the tune apart and put it phrase by phrase, like two bars by two bars. Um, it's always better to learn by ear. Um, use the use the dots as a mnemonic aid, but don't uh, don't don't get reliance on them. Use them to remind yourself of the tune, not to play it. So the first two bars. Next two bars, which wonderfully are exactly the same as the first two bars. And the last two bars of the part. I'll do that again. This will change. That version will change as the lesson goes on. That's the way it should be. Um, and also, I'll lift out some connecting notes. You can fill them in yourself as you go along. So I'll play the whole first part slowly. And I'm working ways of making the phrasing better than that. Second part. Again, slowly. Next part, two bars. Again. Next two bars, the same as the first two bars in the second part. And the last two bars. Again. Again, a basic tune model. It's not the tune, it's just the model for it. We'll play the whole second part slowly. Okay, 
So for me, ornamentation is really, really important. Ornamental practices, well, I'm a fingery flute player. I'll be, I'll be very much, I think, in the school of what would have been started by people like Matt Malloy. Um, so um, ornamentation is really, really important for me. Um, however, people tend to get caught up in the big ornaments, the crans and the rolls. Um, the starting point is the small ornaments and is to find the places on your fingers uh, where your fingers aren't really doing the work. People tend to be focused on one or two fingers that do lots and lots of work for them and then the rest of them don't tend to do too much. Very often this is, has a lot to do with the way that you hold the flute. We'll get into this in a minute. But I'm going to start off with some basic small ornaments. Um, so essentially, there's two types of single note ornaments you can play. Um, there's uh, grace notes before the, the, both before the note, uh, grace notes above the note, or bass notes below the note. Uh, sometimes they're called cuts, taps, pick tips, pats, whatever you want to call them. There's no set terminology. But um, here's a couple of little exercises to get your fingers thinking. So to cut single grace notes from above. So we take a sequence like this. So I'm going to put a grace note between the first one of every group of three. So it's like this. time and there's another one at the end as well now find out which ones are easy and which ones are hard everyone again has certain fingers they like using um, you probably find that the using these ones at the top of your hand are a little bit slower and maybe the ones down here at the bottom of the of your second hand tend to be slow as well um, work on them get build up the speed and try and make them work uh, fluidly and you know, at, at dance speed, so like this. Yeah, again. Okay, now the other uh, type of ornament you can have are double note ornaments, and then going up, they can be like this. Sorry. sequence I'm taking the middle note and I'm bouncing the finger to get those double note ornaments um, it's a good exercise a little bit harder well worth working on and again you find out the fingers that are not working as well as the other ones those of you flute players who like Harry Bradley and Conor Agrada and articulate a lot with your throat or articulate with your tongues, try and, try and suppress your needs to articulate uh, for, the, for the next few minutes anyhow, so you can make room for your fingers to work. So we have those two little ornamental uh, exercises. So they can go into the tune very simply. So I put a single note bass note before the first note on the, on the beat. It's about rhythm. All this is about rhythm. Um, but I can choose to do... Sorry. So I bounce the second note to the group of three. Again, to give a different sort of rhythm and a different sort of feel. Um, when you have all that mastered and you can get those things going in those first few bars, we'll move on to another exercise. Um, a short roll exercise. Most people know what rolls are. A, a basic B roll is usually a tone, tone above, tone, tone below, tone. So B, C, B, A, B. Like this. Now that's what Brendan Brannock would describe as a classic long roll. A short roll is the same thing without the first note. So it's this. Um, so you haven't got that first note just out there so a nice exercise to get the short rolls working on all your fingers is using the same sort of sequence as we were using beforehand yeah up 
up the octave. Now, short roll on the first one of each group of three. trick with the short rolls is not to put in the, the the first note of the long roll and just not play it not to do see I'm fingering the beat but to start it here see you lose that first note and the ornament is very much at the top of the note at the front of the note um, it's a bit of a challenge you know you find that some will work better than others I'll do it one more time sure you're not doing and putting long rolls make sure they're, they're short they're, they're, they're short rolls and they're working very much on the top of the note so in the tune they're gonna start to sound like this attractive bouncy rhythm and it's you know, the sort of thing that Matt Malloy and Seamus Tansy and well modern flute players like uh, Mick McGoldrick and Tom Dorley would do a lot of. So we've just covered what I do in the first two what I look at in the, in the first two bars of the tune putting those uh, the, those the, those single note ornaments and the short rolls on the first notes of each group of three or where the beat is. Um, in the second two bars There'll be a lot of similar single note action going on, an awful lot of it. An awful lot of single grace notes from below. They give great rhythm. They, 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 the people tend to be focused on the grace notes from above, but the ones from below are very, very nice. Um, get them very simple, but you have to consciously put them in. Um, So you use them to make rhythm, but you also use them, you know, where you have the chance. Some, some, sometimes you go from one note to another, if you go from a D to an E, you haven't got a chance to put a single grace note in unless you put a D sharp, and that makes you sound like me, and you don't want that. Um, uh, but sometimes they're... From that D to that G, slip in a little F sharp. So if you go from B to A, slip in a little G beforehand. Um, and again, like some Matt Malloy, uh, uh, Kevin Crawford's, uh, the Mick McGoldrick, Seamus Tansy do a lot of this sort of little ornamentation. The little ornamentation is really, really important. Um, another thing I like putting in there is at the start of it is a little cran. Now, for me, there's two type, there's two cran movements that are basic to my flute playing. The first one is this little five note cran here. So that finger, that finger. So five note ornament. Um, now, a lot of people will play that as their D cram. Same two fingers moving. Um, um, I'd use that an awful lot in small places. So I'll do, sorry. Now that's hard to get that into that sort of tight space. Um, very often I'll start it. So again, like the short roll, I'm not playing it with the first note. It's not. It's. But that basic movement, I'll get a lot on the E's, a lot on D's, into small spaces, very often missing that first note. So you could call it a short cram. So in those two bars, I would like doing another thing I'd like doing that sort of little double ornament, another bounce. Um, bounces we'll come back to in a minute, but uh, um, they're again very, very popular ornaments and they give a great rhythmical feel. So, looking again at that first part, 
those things I like doing in lots and lots of single note ornaments, either above or below the note. Um, lots of short rolls and and find the places where they where they tend not to work and get them working there. Target your fingers um, and those little crans. Those ornamentally, they're really really important to me. So again, I'll play it quickly. Um, you can you can hear the things that I'm doing. Too complicated, but lots of.